Here you can see a small local area network. In this arrangement, computers are connected to a cable backbone. There are no connecting devices like switches or routers. Data transmission is managed only by the network interface cards inside these computers. It's an old-fashioned way of building a local area network, but it tells us something fundamental about data transmission, even on a modern network. Pretty much all computer networks these days use Ethernet. Ethernet is a system by which devices can exchange data on a network. Data is broken up and packaged into small pieces by the sending computer. These packages are known as frames. Frames are then transmitted individually. It's convenient to think of a stream of frames on the cable, rather like sticks floating on a river. But this isn't quite true. In reality, each frame is a burst of high and low voltages, which represent the ones and zeros of binary encoded data. The sending computer's network interface card is responsible for generating the rapid pulses of electricity that make up each frame. When a computer transmits a frame, it's actually broadcasting the frame on the network. Every other computer can see the frame, but only the intended recipient, the one with the correct destination MAC address, chooses not to ignore it. At any instant in time, a cable either has a voltage across it, meaning a 1, or it doesn't, meaning a 0. It's in the nature of electricity that there can only be one voltage across the wire at a time. And since each frame must be transmitted in its entirety without interruption, only one computer at a time can transmit a frame on the same stretch of cable. So, if at exactly the same instant two computers attempt to transmit a frame, there'll be a collision and both frames will fail. Each computer must then wait a random amount of time, only a tiny fraction of a second, the so-called back-off delay, before attempting to transmit the failed frame again. But frame collisions were common on an old-style LAN like this. This system for dealing with frame collisions is known as Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. And, fortunately, it happens very quickly. A typical Ethernet can carry up to 10 gigabits per second. That's a lot of frames. Modern wireless Ethernet uses a similar system, but instead of cables, a wireless network uses high-frequency radio waves. A wireless access point does the same job as the backbone cable. All frames are sent to this first, and then they're relayed onwards. Wi-Fi has a range of about 100 metres, but this depends on obstacles like walls or hills, not to mention possible interference from devices like microwave ovens and cordless telephones. Needless to say, the closer you are to a Wi-Fi hotspot, the better. To transmit Ethernet frames over Wi-Fi, the sender must first make its intentions known to the wireless access point. If nothing else is transmitting, the wireless access point will let the sender know that it may continue. Frames are then relayed via the wireless access point to the intended recipient. A wireless network interface card can't transmit and receive at the same time. It's said to be half duplex. And, since other computers may be too far away for direct communication, one computer doesn't necessarily know if another is attempting to transmit at the same time. Therefore, to avoid collisions which would corrupt Ethernet frames, everything must go through the wireless access point. This is known as Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance, and it's the essence of how all Wi-Fi works today. Now, you may be wondering why your neighbour's Wi-Fi doesn't interfere with yours. Well, it might. Normally, each wireless access point operates within its own radio frequency range. When it sets itself up, it will choose a channel that seems quiet at the time and your wireless computers will tune into this, rather like when you tune into a TV or radio station. A modern wireless access point can select one of 23 non-overlapping channels, so hopefully your neighbour's Wi-Fi will be operating in a different frequency range. Nevertheless, sometimes it's beneficial to change your Wi-Fi channel manually, especially in a crowded area. 
It should be said that wireless Ethernet frames are normally encrypted, so the data that you broadcast on the airwaves can't be read, even if it's deliberately intercepted. To summarise then, Ethernet is a system by which computers in a LAN can exchange frames of data. It's controlled by the network interface cards. Data is packaged into frames by the sender's computer. Each frame contains the source and the destination MAC address. Frames are transmitted individually and reassembled by the recipient. Only one device at a time can transmit a frame on the same stretch of cable. Collisions between frames mean that some of them fail to transmit and need to be sent again. This scheme is known as carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. The type of cable and the number of active machines on the LAN govern the speed of data transmission. Typically, this is 10 gigabits per second with category 6 UTP cable. Wi-Fi networks use carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. All Wi-Fi traffic must go through a wireless access point. Different radio frequency ranges, known as channels, allow different Wi-Fi networks to operate properly in proximity of each other.